everyone. I'm here with Anita. I'm so excited. She's going to spa. I came all the way from Buenos Aires, from Argentina, to meet her because uh, she knows a lot about narcissism and recovery and all that. And I really admire her. So I just wanted to interview her, and she was so kind to let me come and visit her here and interview her. So it's amazing. Oh, thank you for thank the introduction, you. Elena. Not a problem at all. I wanted to ask her a few questions. Thank you. Since sure. I love your your blog post and your YouTube channel and your Instagram, so everything is so helpful. You get from every post, you get information and valuable content. So I read in one of her blog posts and that the victim is emotionally giving, very caring, kind, loving, selfless basically good people like you and I. Iñaki Piñuel, who is a Spanish psychologist, and he made an analogy about uh, Snow White and how the evil queen would go and get her heart, and she was kind and loving and everything you mentioned. Yeah. So, and on the other side, we hear a lot about codependency, mm. and this resonated a lot with me because I don't think that all the victims are that way necessarily yeah. and so that's i wanted to know what you think about yes. that elena you know i i also think i don't think that every single victim who goes through narcissistic abuse is um codependent and i've also mentioned this as well there's a lot of people that do have their own autonomy um, they have their own sense of self they're strong people um like like me and you, and I wouldn't necessarily say that we were quite codependent in our yeah. relationships with um, with narcissists. But what I do feel is that there isn't, there are people who are like that, but then there are people who are not like that. And I think, for example, Snow White. Would you have said she's codependent? She was actually fine on her own, and she okay. was she was okay. You know, like she had the seven dwarves. She, you know, that was a good family. Person. She was a that's it. She is, well, she was a good person she had a big kind heart and she was just genuine she was authentic and like many of you are as well um so i guess it, it's it's kind of it's kind of like when you're a good person sometimes um that can be be exploited and yeah. that's such a shame and i think that um i think that can resonate with with many of your viewers mm -hmm. as well that you know when when people um do go through this and sometimes that codependency label doesn't really um fit with, with them like because honestly i didn't identify with that label no. and whilst it does with others and some people genuinely are mm -hmm. quite codependent it didn't for me and i think like Snow White, it's just when you're a good person, you just want to help people naturally. You just want right. to make everything fine because you just because why should someone else suffer? Why should someone else be yeah. feel different? You just want you want to just be good, be and, good. And, and make good. and that's right. the perfect victim, right? For for the narcissist, like, that's what they want. Is it just perfect? Absolutely. They want people to believe in them and it's something that they've not had. So that's what they want from you because you're a good person and you have no reason to doubt them. Yeah. So you do, you do, you believe them. Yeah. And you also mentioned that you healed through education. Yes, yes, yes. And well, she is about to get her PhD. <laughs> so she knows a lot about this. But... Um, and I think we still learn, you know, we are always researching and yeah. we learn through experiences in life, right? And I guess I guess that I guess that's what, what it's about. It's about yeah. learning and for me, for education, I guess mine was also ex experiential because I had worked in like mental health hospitals here in the UK mm -hmm. and they were the, predominantly the people that were yeah. in these hospitals were people who had schizophrenia or personality disorders. So mm -hmm. when I when I when I thought, Oh my god, it happens to all of us. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a certain way or a certain education or a certain no, um, hierarchy be, yeah, yeah, or, a, or a culture or anything. Even a surgeon. Or something. Yes. It doesn't have to be. It, no. Everybody. Everybody, everybody can be affected. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, and I wanted to talk about a bit about CPTSD because I mentioned EMDR for treating. CPTSD, and I wanted to know Anushka's um, point of view. It's such a, it is a complex disorder, and I think with EMDR, 
um, that is very specific to certain events. Yeah. And I think um, I think what we need to remember is the way that we form memories, because that's what it is. With, with EMDR, the reason why it's so specific is because it has to be a certain memory that we have. We and and we remember that all the time, and that's what keeps us in the trauma is remembering that certain experience or that memory. Mm. So the way that the EMDR works is um, you retrieve that memory. You kind of have to go through it, relive it, re-experience it. And with EMDR therapy, you then kind of rework it in your mind. You attach different emotions to it. So when it gets put back into the into the box or into the into the um, into the memory bank, so to speak, right. yeah. it doesn't have that same um, it doesn't have that same connotation or meaning. Yes, and that's how EMDR works. So. I guess um, it could also work with um, a specific person because you also when you get to know someone, mm -hmm. um, you know them in a specific way. And so you will attach meaning and emotions that we just, we do, we're quite emotional creatures anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so if, for example, you, you could work on, on, on that specific person, so you you, you're a therapist and you'd have to go through someone who is specifically trained with EMTR not everybody is and always remember to ask for qualifications and things like yeah, that when you do yes. go to see they have to be certified yes they have to they have to otherwise yeah. it, it's mm -hmm. very dangerous doing that um, with in terms of working with a person you would you would look at that person and all of the trauma that is attached to that person you would have to kind of understand them in a different way and kind of you know also it's about well forgiving yourself as well so emdr in itself really i i, I really am a big fan of emdr mm -hmm. But it's it, it's, it's, it's one very part, specific. Right. Yes, it's one part. It's very specific. It works more with cognition rather than emotional attachment mm. to the memory. So it's cognitive. It's yeah. perfect. But emotionally, right. it's There's always that. Yeah. That's um, what we need to work. Always, <laughs> always <intellectual. laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, and we changed like our personalities. Like, not our personalities, but we change. We, we do change our yeah. personalities, yeah. absolutely. We, we change. Do it so much then. Yeah. You do, and you do, because you have to accommodate and you have to do everything that they want you to do. So, of yeah. course, you change. It changes yeah. a person, it's not you. No. And you're not free, you're just contained, and it's just you're not authentic. You. You're not losing parts of yourself. That's so true. Oh. Yes, you do. You lose your identity. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. then you may start developing anxiety and things like that. Oh, goodness. And yeah, then, yeah. 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 Yeah, so we were talking about before that, about the anxiety and mm. you, had, you made a good point about well-being and bringing to the, you know, bringing yes. yourself. And you, you mentioned music and all that. Yeah, oh, oh, when sure. you sure, yeah. no, of course. Uh, we were, I was talking about, so when you're, when you're experiencing anxiety, that's like basically when you're, all your emotions, your cognitions have gone haywire. Yeah. And when you reach that point, you just think, oh my God, like there is no coming back. But you know what, there are certain things that you can do. So for example, you, what we call it is a technique called grounding yourself in the moment. So it's about literally, it's exactly that, just anchoring yourself in the actual moment so that's like changing your surroundings changing your environment it could be as simple as like you said from upstairs to downstairs maybe even going out the house just for a walk mm -hmm. um, just to feel like the air outside the fresh air it could be if you don't want to go outside because sometimes anxiety can disable us yeah. um Put some music on. Maybe put some music on something that you like, like a favorite song. Um, something that to, reminds you that you're here. That right you're here, now. or a favorite playlist. Like you can, you can put some, you can put together like a playlist of things, of, of songs that you really, really like that could really evoke some emotional um, reaction to, um, I don't know, to something that you're feeling. Just playing that music just to get you out of that moment, yeah. basically. Um, also, um, other things are like um, that could ground you are smells that's what I was going to say smells mm -hmm. so it smells like maybe um like chili sauce or um like mustard yeah, or horseradish yeah. yes or pepper peppers are really good for makes me sneeze <laughs> peppers are really really good so it's just something just to bring you out of that because remember you're in a you're in a different mindset as well so it's just bringing bring you back, back. right yeah. triggers are are a little bit different um, because with anxiety, although you're going to have the uniform um, feelings that you're feeling, for example, you're going to be feeling um, 
Hypertension. Oh yeah, that's the main one. Yeah, heart yeah. hypertension. You're like, oh my god, sweating or dry throat, or you're going to be feeling um, really tearful, um, disorientated. Perhaps this can become a little bit more difficult to deal with because what you're doing is you're experiencing that whole memory, mm-hmm. and you're reliving all of these emotions that are with that memory. So it might be quite. It might be more difficult to be able just to, to to ground yourself and get that awareness. What I would say is, with triggers, just allow it. Just allow it to go go through. But what you can do is do simple things in your daily life that will help you to manage it. So what I'm saying is, because with a trigger, you've got the emotional side and the cognitive side. So it's about kind of um, helping your emotions to feel more settled, more grounded, rather than being in a heightened state all the time. If you're already doing what you're doing, like helping yourself with anxiety, then, you're, then those emotions attached with that is going to help us. So you're going to feel a lot calmer. And again, I, I always say that when you've got routine and you know what you're going to be doing it's kind of it helps you to do that for example this technique could work you could say to yourself that if you're feeling uh, if you're feeling a trigger coming on or if you feel that you're really quite triggered what you can say to yourself is right not right now i'm going to think about it later and then actually have an hour in the day where you are just going to think about your trigger, for example. I know that's not always possible, and I know that doesn't always work for everybody. But for some, see how you feel. But also, um, you know, maybe in the morning you could um, have a journal. You could write in your journal, and then again, your so your helpful. Yeah, this journaling. is journaling is because you, you get in touch with you, you get to know you as well. And with triggers, that's what it's about. It's about knowing you, mm-hmm. knowing how you feel, right. knowing and understanding, well, I can feel a trigger coming on. Okay, now I know what's to be expected. So it's not just all a surprise right. because that can be quite difficult as, it's in itself. Um, yeah. And then at the end of the day, you, you know, you could bookend your day. Again, you could journal, you could... You know, you can have a really write nice a letter, like you wrote a blog post about that. There's yes. a blog post. Uh, she wrote about write a letter and don't send it. Oh my god, it? do not send a letter. Yeah, no, do not. never ever send a letter. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I know you want to. I know you really, really yeah. want to. But don't send letters. Please don't. It's not going to get you anywhere. I swear to God, it won't get you anywhere. Yeah. You'll never understand it anyway. Yeah. <sighs> You won't get it. <laughs> won't get so, it. But you will work through those feelings, and you will magically feel better. And you know. because they're not stuck here, right? Because because when they're here, when you when you you need an outlet for them, you can't keep them here. Exactly. And then you you know, and yeah, that's where it goes. Yeah, it's the anxiety. So you push them down. That's okay. Mm. And it's not it's not okay because they they always come up. But you need an outlet for these negative feelings, and that's what that's what journaling is, and that's what writing that letter is. Yeah. And it's so important. It's so important to do that. That's part of self-care. It really, yes. really is. It's so important to do that. And one thing I said is that self-care, it sounds great, like you take care of yourself. But it takes work, like, especially oh if you're yes. going out about this, you know. You need this energy, this, yes. you need to do it. Like, yes. it takes work. You it know? really, really does. Yeah. You really do have to schedule it in. Yes. Otherwise, it doesn't get done. And I know this. I know this myself. Yeah. Like this, one of my resolutions. You know, I, you know, to have that time for self care because ultimately you're depleting yourself. Yes. And then how can you feel okay when your cup is empty? Right. Right. That's why I was filming uh, Friday videos. Fill your cup. You're sick of hearing me say that. Absolutely. But, yeah. It is. You're it right, is, Alina. Absolutely. Useful and it helps a lot. Yeah. Oh my God. Recovery. Yes, it is. It's a, it's gold. Love vengeance and revenge and all that. Oh yes. yes. <laughs> we feel like we want that, right? Yeah. Um, but, well, I don't know what you feel about that because we didn't talk about oh, that. Oh, we didn't mention that. Yeah, yeah, we didn't mention that. But I think it's useless. Like, you don't, you know, there's no way to go. <laughs> because you will, I feel like you would become them in some way like you're now plotting to do something and you know please don't do that you are like, right yeah you are yeah. right i wanted to ask you how you feel about that what i don't know what advice oh well, revenge is yeah. very very <laughs> yes of course you want to get yeah. revenge on them and and believe me i've been there as well but then i'm going to ask you a question after you have done the revenge, um, after, say, for example, you did um, 
what is it that you actually would do? Wouldn't it be better maybe writing it down? Um, but even if you were to take revenge on that person, I know. I know that you would feel amazing for days, hours, weeks, I don't know. But then after that, especially if you've got children, what are you teaching your kids? And isn't revenge always better served cold when someone is not expecting it? They're going to be expecting you to take revenge. You don't yeah. want to do that. that. Revenge is such an ego um, is yeah, it? serving. Such a, it is yeah. such an it's ego and ego going head to head. And believe me, we don't do that, do we? We don't do ego. No. Because we are better than that. We are above that. Okay, we don't want to behave like them. Revenge is when you feel good, when you um, when you live well. You take care of yourself. Exactly. Can you imagine if, you know, say for example, a year from now, you are living your best life. Um, you are living a life that you absolutely love and are happy and are thriving. And they look at that and they know that they didn't destroy you. They know that you are thriving. Wouldn't that be better? Because that will hurt them more than you wanting to take revenge. And I know, I know you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, that's like going to be ages and ages. <laughs> Make it happen. You have the, um, you have the power to make that happen. You can make your life happen. And ultimately, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be putting um, all of that energy into helping you into making and, and giving yourself the life that you've always wanted. Otherwise, revenge, what is that? You're just putting more energy into them. And you're that's what you're doing. You're giving them your energy. And haven't you done enough of that? Yes. What's the point? Let them live their life <laughs> yes <laughs> go and do what they're doing <laughs> bye yeah totally agree and oh, i wanted to ask you you um do coaching online and i'm going oh. to link her channel below i'm going to say that Thank also you. in the beginning but and her instagram she does coaching online and she is very good i tell you <laughs> because yeah uh, she's lovely but uh, so how do you do that do you do you one session to oh okay so yeah it's 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 done online or it can be done face to face um it's usually done on skype so location oh. isn't a problem right. um and when i do do the co when i do do the coaching or the sessions it, it is very specific to narcissistic abuse mm. um i've also got other options coming i'm going to be doing a membership um oh. i'm going to be doing a membership yeah um so, uh, kind of part of the site um mm later on this year. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully going to be running workshops as That's well. That's my friend. Workshops here? So here? Yes, yeah. here. Here uh -huh. I am actually in this building. Uh -huh. um, yes. Yes, yeah, so, and also I'll be doing like some podcasts. Um, but oh, predominantly, oh. yeah, yeah, I'm going to start oh, that up again. To that. Yeah, and yeah. I want to do that. I really yeah. enjoyed it's it like last right time. when I take my kids to school. <laughs> so many people say yeah. that. That's so much. It's so much easier. Yeah, because you can't watch a video when you're driving, right? right? Yes. I <laughs> know. Oh, no, no, no. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm going to be. I'm going to be doing that. So that's all coming up in 2019. Um, yeah, sessions oh, usually exciting. online. Yeah. Great. So I'm going to finish this video here, and I'm going to make another one. Or next week maybe or we'll see when I put that one up and yeah and so thank you so much for oh, thank, thank you for having me on your today. channel I really really enjoyed it thank yeah. you yeah. thank you thank you so much okay, okay. bye, bye. <laughs>